In our last Grand Admiral profile, we spoke about Rufon Tejelanus, who was the only Grand Admiral to serve as both an Imperial Grand Admiral and Grand Moff. Today we're going to be moving on to the Grand Admiral who technically held both titles, but in slightly different contexts, Grand Admiral Octavian Grant. Octavian Grant originally came from the Tapani sector, where he was a member of the influential Makedi noble house. Tapani space had spent much of its history running as its own empire, separate from the rest of the galaxy, including both the Republic and the Sith. While they did eventually send representatives to the Republic Senate, they viewed the Republic as, according to Galaxy of Intrigue, a quote, business necessity, and an attitude persisted within the sector that they were both self-sufficient and superior to the rest of the galaxy's inhabitants. Grant, who was well-loved within the Tapani sector, continued to hold this sentiment throughout his life, including a personal belief that he was Emperor Palpatine's social superior. He was particularly disdainful of droids and non-humans, calling them the working class. Grant's military career began in the Tapani Home Defense Fleet during the Clone Wars. He served as one of the highest ranking commanders in the Republic's fleet as a Grand Moff in charge of the Emerald Banner Command. At this point, the Moffs were more directly military commanders appointed by Palpatine using old obscure laws to be answerable directly to him rather than to anyone else. Grant was, famously, equally disdainful of politicians as he was of droids and aliens and as such he would not have been serving in a primarily political role at any point. So while he technically did hold the rank of Grand Moff, this was before it meant what it did later on and there's no indication that he continued to hold the rank of Grand Moff as things shifted within the Empire. So where Rufon Tejelanus was simultaneously a Grand Admiral and a Grand Moff and doing different duties for both, when Grant was a Grand Moff, it was a military rank that would have superseded any other rank that he had. Once he became a Grand Admiral two years before Yavin, as one of the original Twelve, he was quite unpopular with both his colleagues in the Grand Admirals as well as the Emperor's Court because of his unwillingness to engage with others in internal Imperial politics. While he was largely unpopular within the Court and the rest of the Empire compared to the other Grand Admirals, Grant always remained hugely popular in the Tapani sector. There were reporters who would follow him around to any event and whose entire job was just to report back to the sector on his activities. When Palpatine died, Grant was believed by many to be the most likely to die a quick and brutal death with his lack of allies, but he would ultimately outlive every other Grand Admiral appointed by Palpatine and end his life in quiet retirement, although there were other Grand Admirals appointed by people who weren't Palpatine later, like Gilad Pelion. Tapani had thrown off the Imperial rule soon after Endor and quickly joined the New Republic. Grant himself tried to defect to the New Republic side, but his offer was rejected. Seeing the writing on the wall, he had no real intention of sticking with the Imperial forces, and no personal interest in carving out his own empire like a lot of the other Grand Admirals or Grand Moffs tried to do. Instead, Grant went to the Penistar alignment, seeking the protection of Grand Moff artist Kane, with both he and Kane staying out of the bloody Imperial fighting which ensued soon after, as well as escaping the early wrath of the New Republic because of where they were located and the Penistar alignment's desire to avoid conflict with the New Republic early. Six years after the Battle of Yavin, Grant and Thrawn were the only remaining Grand Admirals, although Thrawn's existence was a secret to the New Republic. Many in the New Republic, as a result, wished to actively hunt for Grant in order to bring down what they thought was the last of the Emperor's Grand Admirals, but Grant instead offered to defect once again, this time promising to bring many Imperial secrets to the New Republic on the condition that he be immune to prosecution for his actions as an Imperial and that he be allowed to retire. They accepted this time and he retired to Rathalay in the Taldot sector. His retirement remained quiet for a couple years, though he was still a celebrity in his home sector. When Grand Admiral Thrawn attacked though, he began to ask the New Republic to allow him to fight against his old peer. Thrawn was, as a non-human, unworthy of the rank bestowed upon him according to Grant, and Grant had long harbored resentment against the Chiss Grand Admiral. The beleaguered New Republic declined his offer, but he would ultimately provide the information during the Reborn Emperor's campaigns, which allowed the New Republic to track down his old protector, Artis Kane, and destroy his shuttle, thereby killing the last major warlord active outside of the Deep Core. This does mean that he not only didn't join the Reborn Emperor's campaigns against the New Republic, he actively worked against them. We don't know when he ultimately died, but it seems unlikely that he ever rejoined in any sort of command capacity within the New Republic forces, and because of working against Emperor Palpatine, it seems unlikely that he would have gone back to the Emperor or to the Empire for anything else either. If he were to have rejoined the military on any side at any point, it would have been most likely 
likely during the Yuuzhan Vong War when every resource was being scraped together. It's also conceivable that during the Second Galactic Civil War, when many sectors and planets revolted against the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, that Grant might have joined the Tapani forces, which tended to side with the Confederacy. We again have no direct sources on Grant doing anything during the Yuuzhan Vong War or Second Galactic Civil War, but those are the kinds of things that might have been able to draw him out of retirement, or convince others that he was trustworthy enough to work for, especially if they had no other real choices. Either way, that's going to do it for today's video. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. If there's something you'd like to see me cover on the channel, please leave in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.